Our photographer's camera caught DPS attempting to deploy spikes, but the red PT cruiser maneuvers away. Seconds later, you can see the entourage of law enforcement units chasing the car. Less than 30 seconds later, the speeding vehicle clips a pickup truck, hits the median, and rolls. Officers say one person tried to run but was tased and apprehended. At approximately 7.20, ambulances and fire trucks also arrived to the scene. The sun sets near Anzaldúas Park. Constables look to see what's happening in Mexico. We're told the Mexican military is now patrolling their side of the border, but only until the sun goes down. One, two, three, four. Here they come. Photojournalist Andrew Sanchez and I followed a constable as he walked closer to the river. Once we reached a higher point, yep, got him. we noticed a group of people who just crossed the border. And they only speak Portuguese. She's going to California. California, oh, miss. She looks uh, pregnant? Yes, she's 15 years old. 15 years old. Are you relieved that you're here now? I can't believe that I'm here. The gorgeous view at South Padre Island was interrupted about a week ago. Yeah, we're in Texas. Oil, pipeline, that's what I was thinking. No, it's not part of offshore oil drilling, but this boat is pumping something from the ocean bed. The Army Corps of Engineers is in the middle of dredging the ship channel. Years of erosion from the ocean's waves have pulled sand from the island's beaches into the direct path of cargo boat shipping lanes. So the idea is pretty simple here. There's too much sand in the ship channel, not enough sand on the beach. So essentially what they're going to do is hook up a vacuum on a boat and pump the ship channel sand over to the beach, one hose length at a time. So if you're curious on how much sand is coming out of this pipe, when they're all done here, the beach is going to be about four feet taller than what it was. That's a whole lot more room to do your sunbathing. Removing the water is not the worst part about a flood. This is my grandma right here. It's finding out what the water's washed away. Yeah, these are pretty wet. Angel Aguirre and his mother lost just about everything. Their home in Weselco was basically a swimming pool. Actually, right here where we're standing, probably about a good size right here. So the best way to look at flood damage is from the sky, so that's where we're heading. At about 2,000 feet, you start to get the idea of where the flooding is. The farmland has been turned into lakes, leaving little places for the water to go. As our pilot loops around the northern neck of Westlaco, near mile nine, we realize why it's taking so long for that water to drain. Some say this road has become more like an obstacle course. They say some of these potholes are so deep that they're ruining their vehicles. Well, guys, this is where the family of 13, mostly children, were staying until Monday night. That's when they say the heavy rain and winds blew their home completely off its foundation and as you can see it's now toppled over they say everyone made it out okay but they say everything inside the home was destroyed and that's not all if you look back here just behind the home they say their vehicle was blown over as well this well-kept property in palm view is carrie johnson's pride and joy a coop full of chickens and a garden full of veggies help Johnson feed her family on a budget. All this back here, it's nothing but a jungle. We suited up to see why. The grass on this property is almost as tall as I am and the weeds have grown into trees. The city says that's why this isn't a normal cleanup job. It's going to take a whole lot of manpower and more than just one tractor. Runners ready? On your mark? Get set, go! Competitive racing is popular in the valley. It's also a great way to earn money for charities. But it would seem one group of runners signed up for a race that has no finish line in sight. 
Well, let the, uh, it's very foggy out here for one, but it's business as usual here at the Veterans International Bridge. Not too much traffic going in and out at this time, but of course, we, recently we have reported on gun battles that have taken place just across this bridge and that have left 14 dead just recently. Yeah, well, right now you couldn't drive down Alamo Road even if you went down these barricades. Crews dug up this pavement last night in order to create this trench. Millions of gallons of water from all all over the Edinburgh area are flowing into that drain. It's supposed to solve the issue of standing water, but it's also halting business for the people in this plaza. Now, before there were meteorologists or first five warm weather, farmers depended on little hints from nature to tell the future forecasts of rain. It may not be an exact science, but it's an indicator of what kind of weather is to come. Forty-five years of farming left Steve Wolf with a whole wealth of knowledge. No two years are the same. <laughs> but one thing remains true. When it rains, you're shut down until it dries up again. Growing crops revolves around the weather. It's a problem farmers have faced since the dawn of time. Before there were forecast reports, many farmers took notes from these little guys. Snails crawling up on, on weeds and grass and buildings. Uh, some people say it's a sign of rain. Rain. The valley received a lot of it. Wolf says he's also seen a lot of snails. And animals have a sixth sense and, and they know what they're doing for whatever reason they're doing. According to Wolf, snails aren't nature's only forecaster. Tarantulas crossing the, the highway, purple sage blooming, mesquite trees blooming. I've heard that's a sign of rain. The urban legend has lived on for years, but don't ask Wolf how it works. Because I don't have the foggiest idea what those snails are doing. It seems that this year the populations are really large for many insects. Entomologist Raul Villanueva doesn't really believe that insects can predict the weather. He can confirm this, they do react to it, just like this infestation of sugarcane aphids. The rain, they come out because otherwise they are going to be drowned. We found evidence of the snails heading for higher grounds in a nearby orchard. Many had died. All that were left were empty shells. It makes you wonder if that means drier weather is ahead of us. I believe that's uh, based to our perception of the people. This scientist isn't budging on his beliefs. Farmer Wolf, on the other hand. I'm in the middle of harvest right now, and I certainly hope they're wrong. If rains are in the forecast, Wolf hopes they come at a snail's pace. Small snails, blooming flowers, or giant spiders may not be the perfect way to forecast weather, but the good news is, nowadays, we have meteorologists. John Bartell, Channel 5 News, Westlaco.